In order to install the linear bearing link drive, we've removed the lever arm mechanism as the pump had been used as a hand pump. We're going to be removing the three quarter inch stainless rod and replacing it with a new or, or different stainless rod that runs up into the linear bearing link drive. So the pump head is lifted up to expose the first bell end. The safety tool is put in position to hold on to the top drop pipe and the string of pipe. The channel lock is used to remove the riser tube and pump head so we can gain access to the three quarter inch stainless rod connection. As soon as the pump head and riser tube are removed, it exposes the three quarter inch stainless rod. We are going to be disconnecting the stainless rod, the three quarter inch stainless rod from the top sucker rod. Once that rod has been disconnected, the new longer stainless rod, it's approximately 36 inches long, is threaded in position. There are no flats on this rod. The, the pump head and riser tube are installed, making special precautions to uh, orient the top end of the stainless rod. The top end of the stainless rod has a little bevel to make uh, it easier to get it past the two U-cup seals in the rod gland without damaging them. The, rod, the riser tube is now torqued onto the stainless nipple. And now the pump head can be lowered back down into the, safe, uh, the split flange. The safety tool is removed. The pinch bolt on the split flange is tightened up to hold the riser tube and the simple pump string of pipe in place vertically. The three additional bolts that connect the split flange to the well cap are now tightened up. And now we're ready to bring in the linear bearing link drive mechanism. The first item that needs to be uh, oriented is we're placing the stainless rod over the first linear bearing over this yoke and then the second linear bearing. We're lowering the mechanism down to where the four mounting bolts are aligned, which would be at approximate quarter inch of space between the bottom end of the bearing housing and the top of the rod gland. There are four fasteners that are then connected to hold the mounting plate for the linear bearing link drive in place. Once those four fasteners are torqued into position and the mounting plate is tight, we're going to then tighten the two larger diameter stainless fasteners on the yoke which pinch or hold the yoke to the stainless rod. Obviously we've removed the cover to be able to show you what's going on inside of the cabinet. Uh, this would all be shrouded with a, a stainless cover at, upon final installation. We're going to use a battery to show you uh, just what it would be like to test the unit after it's been installed. The stroke is approximately five inches. This is a three gallon, actually, excuse me, a five gallon per minute pump cylinder at the bottom. But that five gallon per minute is over a 10 inch stroke. This is a five inch stroke. So what you're going to see here when it starts up is about two and a half gallons a minute. We're now connecting the wiring. There are two points of connection small terminal strip inside. Ideally, uh, we would like to see this run uh, clockwise, but it really doesn't so much matter with this unit. Uh, if you have a preference, just switch the wires at the battery or switch the wires at the terminal strip. There's a 25 amp fuse in an automobile style configuration. The fuse is accessible from the outside. It's in a weatherproof or fuse holder. There's also a, uh, a, a rocker switch called a surf and turf rocker switch. The switch is designed to take pressure washing. Uh, we don't expect that you're going to pressure wash your linear bearing link drive, but it may be exposed to driving rain, which is not a whole lot different than a pressure washer. So 
We're going to go ahead and flick the switch here. It may take a little, a couple of rotations to get water flowing. As we have a weep hole in the top drop pipe, and we got to bring water up from the weep. And again, that's about two and a half gallons a minute. 